So, we're going to jump straight into this. 2 Corinthians 3.17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Some transitions say where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I'll take liberty and freedom. I'll take both of them. And so, what you need to understand is, here's the thing. Most people come to church to get a spiritual experience, and that is so good. If this Sunday morning service is the best experience you have all week, you have missed the whole meaning of this whole thing. It's just another good experience. The greatest experience I have every day is when all y'all ain't in here, and it's me and the Lord. And I don't know, but right here's my spot. I just, right here's where I meet with the Lord. There's just places in, in, in your house you should have. When we're, as we're building our new house, I have an office and I have a corner already designated in the, my office that is my, my time, my place that I'm going to meet with the Lord. You walk in my office, you're just going to fall out in the spirit. It's going to be saturated with the power and the presence of God, worship plan 24-7, it's going to be a place that when someone walks in, they will be healed instantly. I'm just telling you, you need to have a place. So where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and there is freedom. You decide if there's going to be liberty and freedom in your house, in your car, in your life. And I believe over this house, you know what, what I do, I pray at least an hour a day praying in the spirit over this in, in here because I want to see people walk in, touch, change, and healed to go back and to the place to where they live to bring liberty and freedom there. 1 Corinthians 2 and 10, it says, But now God unveils these profound realities to us by the Spirit. I love the Bible says, you know, where there's no mentors, people will go astray, plans will fail. That is true, okay? Where there's no counsel, plans will stray. You need a counselor, you need a mentor in your life. But if that is the strongest voice in your life, your counselor, your mentor, you're, you're going to fail in life, okay? Because you have to have the Holy Spirit. The majority of the things that I learn in my life are by the Spirit of the Lord. You have to know the Spirit of the Lord stronger than you do anybody else's voice. Your mom, your dad, your spouse, your friends, whoever. You need to know the Holy Spirit needs to be the loudest voice in your life. When, when the Spirit of God says something... To you, nobody, 10,000 voices should not be able to talk you out of one voice, from one word from the Lord. You should be like, I'm hard-headed, but I'm real hard-headed when I hear a word from God. When I hear a word from God, nobody can talk me out of anything because I know his voice. Why? He's spoken to me before. I stepped out on faith. Everybody said it wasn't the Lord, and it turned out to be great. Okay, when you do that and you build history with God, you will be so hard headed in the spirit that God can tell you the wildest, craziest thing that absolutely makes no sense whatsoever. And it will come to pass. I remember when I first started in ministry, I didn't know anything about anything. And it was probably good. And God would tell me to do crazy stuff, lay hands on people in wheelchairs. And I remember I never heard anything on healing. I said, Lord, they're in a wheelchair. I mean, he knew that he was God, but I didn't, no one ever talked to me about healing. I never heard scriptures on healing. And so when the Lord, when the Lord speaks to you about something, you have to learn how to move in it, no matter how crazy it seems. Are y'all with me on this? Now y'all can amen me in church, but I promise you, <laughs> I've only felt this about three times in my life, that this message would change your life forever. I preached a message like this 20 years ago, and there was a young lady there that she said, after that message, my whole life got turned upside down. It made no sense. Everybody came against me, and now everybody's glad I, I did exactly what the Holy Spirit told me. It made no sense. She said, I gave up everything my future offered to follow one word from the Lord. And it radically reshaped me. So saying that, let me finish the scripture. 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. It says, he will reveal to us the innermost heart and deepest mysteries through the Holy Spirit who explores all things. See, the Bible says the kingdom of God is within us. 
the problem is Holy Spirit's trying to get it out of us. There's things that every one of you want to do in your life that you're scared to death to tell people about. So you just got to learn how to blurt it out. You, you got to learn to have people that will hold you accountable in a good way because there are some deep things inside of you that you know you're supposed to do. And in the natural, they make no sense. I refuse to do anything that makes sense in the natural. Where is the fun in that? And it's not. But, but you look at our world and the way our world is going, God needs some radical people. He needs some people who will think differently, who will, well, excuse me, think biblically, not differently, think biblically and move in the biblical things and see things start to happen. So when it says that the Lord wants to explore the deep mysteries, the deep things of our heart, this is what you need to do. Make time and say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. You don't talk. Leonard Ravenhill said the best prayer meeting is when Noah's talking <laughs> because it gives uh, him time to talk. And so when he's talking to you, he'll start pulling things out and revealing things that is within you. And so when he does that, all of a sudden you will understand the reason you were given that one gift, that one talent, that one particular gift that you have. See, some people in here have this gift that you're, you're not using for the kingdom. You're not using it to make money. You're not using it to, to better humanity. But if you could learn how to use that gift by the Holy Spirit, it would change everything in your life. I remember multiple times my wife and I, we loved Jesus and coffee in our house. And, and she would look at me and she would say something that she saw in me and I'd be like, me? Really? You think I could do something like that? She's like, oh yeah. I've had times my friends would say, Joe, I see that you could do this. I said, it's funny you say that because I, I feel that in my spirit. I just haven't been bold enough to step out and to do it. Some of y'all are going to be bold. Now, here's the thing. Y'all ready? Y'all going to get a warning. Because the, when you learn something and you don't apply it, you're going to get in trouble with God. Never try to go against the Holy Spirit. So, you know why y'all tired? Because some of y'all are going against the Holy Spirit. <laughs> when I'm tired, it's me, y'all. It's me going against the Holy Spirit. Never go against the Holy Spirit. Just give in. And just go for it. What would happen if you threw your whole life into God? I mean, okay, let, let, me, just, let me just say what's going on, really. This is where some of y'all at. And y'all kind of like tip don't. I broke my tailbone when I was a kid. One time I was trying to feel the water. And my dad was like, just jump in. I said, no, dad, I'm going I'm to feel the Like I fell and broke my tailbone. You know why? Because I didn't just jump on in. Some of you are going to feel that the Holy Spirit brings something up. And you need to move forward. Never try to go against the Holy Spirit and what he's telling you to do. Okay, second thing. Do you want God's wisdom or your own? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Do you know the Holy Spirit? If you know the Holy Spirit, the Bible says every, every tree, I'm going to change it to person, is known by their fruit. You can look at the fruit of anybody's life and see who they're listening to. People lie to you. Their fruit doesn't. It's like, could you imagine if you had a nasty looking apple and someone said, oh, that's a good apple. You're like, no, it's not a good, the fruit, look at it. You can look in, in your life and see if you're following the Holy Spirit or not. Get that godly wisdom. He'll bring a change to everything, everything. First Corinthians, I'm not even gonna get to these. I got so many notes. I overstudy when I talk about the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians 2.14, someone living on an entirely human level, rejects the revelation of God's Spirit. Now, if you're flowing with the Holy Spirit, people in this world is not going to understand you. Okay, people are watching this on, I don't raise your hand, but how many folks, all your family doesn't understand you? Okay, but because people don't understand you, why? Because, who, who they call when they're in trouble? Go, oh, come on. It, but the thing is, it, it's that wisdom because when you really follow the Lord and you spend time with him, you should spend more time with the Lord than any person. Why? Because when you learn the characteristics of the kingdom, especially in 2021, it's not making a lot of sense in the way that the world is today. But when you flow with the Holy Spirit, it all starts to make sense. Man, I told a guy one time, I said, man, I sure like that cane you got. And uh, he said, okay. I said, I'll buy it for $20. I 
I love telling people stuff. He's like, well, how am I going to walk? I said, I want it for $20. And uh, he's like, what? I'm like, I'll give you $20. I'll pray you'll get healed and I'll get your cane. He wouldn't be pray for me. I said, everybody loves a 20, right? And if y'all got some extras, let me know. But like, like you pray for somebody, they'll get healed. You see somebody emotionally down, they, they don't understand that God has taken them through a process, even if something happened to them. But when you think kingdom, it starts to shift everything. It is, it, this is what I love about 1 Corinthians 2. Someone living on extremely human level. How many people do you know live on level? This is why the, in, in our nation right now, the media and political, vax, unvax, everybody's in an uproar because they're trying to do the best thing naturally they know when the Lord is trying to get our attention. And he's going to bring things back to a foundation that he has. What foundation? The Bible. A biblical foundation. You see companies get off. You see ministers get off. You see ministers get off. You see different people get off track. Why? They start relying. Never become a professional Christian. Never become a professional in your field. Always rely on Holy Spirit. I don't care if you've been doing your job for 40 years. You get up every day and say, God, I'm going to need help today doing the same thing I've done for 40 years. Can you help me move forward today in what I do, in my craft, in my skill, to, to be a use to humanity? And the thing is, it says they reject revelations of God's spirit. I mean, you just think all throughout the Bible, Jesus told somebody to get out of a perfectly good boat to get on a stormy sea. That makes no sense whatsoever. Good thing for them that they did. You got to understand, you got to roll with the Lord more than the things of this earth. It says, and they make no sense to them. He cannot understand the revelation of the spirit because they've only discovered by the people of the spirit. The people of the spirit understand things. And so this, this is what I've asked the Lord to do. I don't really watch the news, but every now and then you see the news if you're in a store or something. And I've asked the Holy Spirit, because me and him are really close, tell me what's of him and what's not of him. You'll be watching something, and you'll hear something on the news, like 98% of the time, and the Holy Spirit will be, that, don't believe that that's not of me. And every now and then there's something I think, that is so far from the truth, and the Holy Spirit will be like, no, that is the truth. And I'm like, oh, and you have no idea. And so when somebody's talking to you about something, I ask the Holy Spirit, this is how I save a lot of time in life. I say, when I meet somebody, Holy Spirit, let me know their true intention before I even engage with them, before I talk to them. Or what, are, what is their angle they're trying to come in? And it saves you a lot of hurt as well. You need to become so close to the Holy Spirit. He needs to be your closest companion. You need to be full of the Spirit because the Spirit of God is what wisdom. And when you operate in full wisdom, you will not give in to the wisdom of the world. You can be the smartest person on planet Earth and be the dumbest person in the Spirit. You can be somebody who's not very smart in the natural, um, none of y'all, but, but, but full of the Spirit. Man, and, and so... You, like, like I, I have a, a piece of paper on the wall that costs way too much money, but I don't really use it that much. What I do use is what I receive in prayer because I'm, I'm full of the spirit. I'm smart in the natural. I married my wife. I'm real smart in the natural, but, I married, but then I'm full of the spirit. Is this making sense? I don't care how much natural wisdom you have. People, I, people that, that have jobs that are problem solvers, I, I, I talk to people that all the time that say, like, I'm a problem solver at work and I don't know what to do. I don't even fully know what I'm doing, but I rely on the Holy Spirit. If someone, let's say that you're counseling someone, Thanksgiving, Christmas, somebody comes up to you and they're just telling you their problems, just say, Holy Spirit, I don't know what to do in this situation. Can you please give me wisdom that can set them free? The Lord will give you a word that will set your family member free. And the, if they do it at Thanksgiving, Christmas will be better. You might even get a present from them. And so use the spirit of the Lord to unlock people. That's what I love about being full of the spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, 12. For we did not receive the spirit of this world system, but the spirit of God. Are y'all tracking with me on that? We did not receive the spirit of this world system, but the spirit of God. 
so that we might come to understand and experience all the grace that he has lavished upon us. See, if you try to figure out why you're walking in blessing and favor in the natural, you'll never understand it. He just loves you, so just receive it. You know, it doesn't matter if you're good, if you're bad. He just, he loves you and that's it. And when you receive the spirit of God and a full understanding of the spirit of God, you will start to understand that the the world systems, they will come against the spirit of truth because the spirit of truth never lies. Everybody lies. Everybody manipulates. Uh, You know, that's why why little kids, when, when they're young, they, they just, they're just kind of born and they just manipulate stuff. You know, this is how little kids are, older kids too. But, but people just are, are born with that mindset. But when you're, you're, you're birthed in the spirit in a strong way, this wisdom comes and you won't operate in natural things. You will do stuff that makes no sense, but it will be to your benefit when you follow the spirit of the Lord. I hope you're really getting this. But, but because w- when I spend my Mark 135 time Jesus got up early in the morning went to the solitary place where he prayed with the Lord the spirit of God ministers to me so I can be more effective that day I don't care you know I, I like to read I like to study and stuff that's good and that's a revelation from someone else's time with the Lord but I need my own revelation I need my own time with God I don't need just to regurgitate what everybody else has said I need to have that encounter Because when a time hits me in a rough season and I get knocked back, I'm in a warfare season. I need to say, but now, God, you spoke to me that one morning. I I wrote it down. I remembered it. You said this, Lord. He's like, oh, my boy remembers what I told him. My son remembers. And when, when, when you remember what the Lord has spoken to you, nothing could ever stop you. You hear me? Nothing can ever stop you. Romans 15, 13. Now may God be the the fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in him. Okay, God wants to make you a fountain of hope and you need to be filled with, with overflowing, uncontainable joy and peace in 2021. Oh yeah, I don't care what goes on in the world. You need to be so full and overflowing that everywhere that you go, you overflow everywhere that you go. You need to be the person that they say, man, when this person comes in, this the whole place lights up. The whole place is better. The more that you die to the flesh and you live in the what? The spirit, things are going to just start happening. And I mean, everywhere that you go, when you're full of the spirit, when I walk into Walmart, you walk into Walmart, God's going to use you, okay? Just walk in full of the spirit. When you walk into a restaurant, Walk in full of the Spirit. You know, it's just, you just get ready to be an overflow. When you get so full and you overflow, it just happens everywhere that you go. People want to look for ministry. It's all around you. But until you're overflowing, you're just trying to get full. But do whatever it takes. Get, get full of the Spirit of God so strong. Let that overflow hit. It will change everybody around you. To go on, finish 13. It says, And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with his super abundance until you radiate with hope. Now, when I was praying over this, let me tell you what I felt on that. This goes to the entrepreneurs in here. As I was just praying about that, the power of the Holy Spirit continually surrounds you and surrounds your life with super abundance. I just feel like the Lord was saying, as I said earlier, that the spirit of the Lord is the spirit of wisdom. It brings freedom and liberty. It will bring some people financial freedom and liberty to the place that their money, their pockets will be overflowing. I might just leave it out. Your pocket needs to overflow because there's a lot of hurting people around you. There was a time in my life when I, I, I would see people and i say, Lord, I just, especially this time of year, I said, I wish I could do something for this family at Christmas or Thanksgiving or this one family. I wish I could do something. And so I, I wanna, want you to understand that the Holy Spirit will continually surround your life with this super abundance. But here's the thing. Who's this abundance for? It's for his kingdom. It's not just for us. It's for everybody around you. Have you ever really just just dove into the life of Jesus and understood that everything he did was for other people? 
for us, for humanity. And so when you start to think about living an abundance, life with an abundance mindset, overflowing, there's a lot of people that you're around that's about to get changed. They're about to get healed. They're about to walk in financial freedom. Some people, they just need one help. They just need a little bit of help. They just need somebody to reach down and pull them up from where that person came up maybe last year. It may be a piece of wisdom, maybe a piece of knowledge, maybe a revelation. It may be a financial blessing. If you could pay one bill off for somebody, one small bill, it could change their life. I had a guy do that for me one time. I've never forgot it. We were eating at um, McAllister's years ago. He said, you seem like you got a lot of stress on you, young man. I said, yes, sir. He said, how's your bills? And I just said, well, I got this, this, and this. He said, let me, let me just knock one or two of those off for you real quick. And what I thought was a lot of money what was nothing to him. And he just freed me up from a few bills. And I said, well, thank you, sir. He said, don't thank me. As you get older, go do that for somebody else. And I said, okay. He said, learn how to pay things forward. He said, every time the Spirit of the Lord blesses me, he said, I use that same thing to bless other people with, and it just keeps going. And so understand that. Uh, John 14, 26. But when the Father sends the, the Spirit of holiness, holiness, that's what I'm talking about, the Spirit of holiness, the one like me will set you free. It says, he will teach you in all things in my name, and he will inspire you to remember every word that I told you. Now, we're going to camp out here for a minute. The Father's going to send the Holy Spirit. It's going to be the, Holy, it's going to be the Spirit of holiness, okay, which means there is no sin in the Spirit. If you follow the Spirit, you will not be sinning in certain situations. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is a comforter and a convictor. If you've ever got a... <clears throat> Pay attention, okay? If you, you ever get that little, that little nudge, that, 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 don't go there, son. Don't go there. That's what the Holy Spirit is, is saying too. And it says that he will guard you from that. But then the scripture right here, 1 John 14, 26, it says he will set you free, completely set you free from that. And when you're renewed in your mind, you won't go back to it. Reoccurring sin, you'll be set free from it. And then it says he will teach you all things. The Holy Spirit is, this is, what I want you, this is your homework assignment. I live in this. Holy Spirit, I don't understand why this is happening to me. But usually when it's happening to me, it's actually happening for me. Okay? When, when you grow through stuff. But then, the, the, like, like, I might not understand something in the world that's going on. And I ask the Lord, and the Lord will speak, speak to me. Holy Spirit would teach me in a situation. If you get mad about the same thing over and over, ask the Holy Spirit what's really going on. Do you know the majority of the times when I do that, he tells me something that blows my mind that, that I would have never thought of. So I know it's the Lord, and it's never what I thought it was. And it's never what you thought it was. And so he will teach you all things, and he will inspire you to remember every single thing that you've learned. This is why I love the Word. This is why I love reading and listening to podcasts. And so there's times in my life when I need to make a decision. I'll be like, okay, Lord, I, I, need, to, I, need, I need to know something, an answer. And the Holy Spirit will, it's so cool. He'll remind me, remember that podcast you listened to three years ago? Go listen to it. I'll be like, I don't even remember that stuff. And I'll go back. That's why I got way too many books. And I'll go back to the Lord and say, remember this book you read by Dutch Sheets, Ryan Lestrange, whoever, John Eckhart? And I'll go back and, and read like, and I've had the Lord say, this a certain book, chapter four. I go back and read it. Don't even know what the book was about, and it's the exact thing. He will bring things back to remember. That's why if you know the scriptures, you'll start rattling scriptures off whenever a situation comes up. If, um, if you're ever, something happens and you have a physical infirmity, you can rattle off healing scriptures. If something happens financially, you know how to fight with, with the word of God because the spirit of God will bring it back to your remembrance. I don't know about you, but there's times I'm like, hey, Holy Spirit, I need you to bring a bunch of stuff back to my remembrance right now. If the Lord t told you to, uh, to, to be friends with somebody and they just frustrate you to no level, say, Holy Spirit, why in the world did you tell me to be friends with that person? And he'll come back and tell you an answer that will break your heart for that person because it's not about us. Y'all tracking with me? There's a guy the Lord told me to be friends with. I really don't like him that much. But... Um, Recently, he reached out to me, and I said, Lord, every time he reaches out to me, he just 
we become friends and he does something crazy again and he frustrates me to a whole new level. He just, just won't do right. And the Holy Spirit said, why is it about you? He needed somebody to be faithful. And I thought, oh, that's kind of how you are to me, right? <laughs> so I kind of like, okay. And so then I called this guy and said, hey, man, let, let's go to lunch. Let's, let's hang out. And his life was kind of messed up. But I just said, hey, just a few small adjustments. You can get right back on track where you need to be again. And you know what? He comes back again. I love on him the same way because the Holy Spirit told me to. And so when you're, you're, you're building your life with the Holy Spirit, daily communication, he will guide you. He will lead you. And here's another thing. Go back to the first scripture. It says the spirit of the Lord is there's freedom and liberty. You'll have freedom because you don't have to worry about things. The Holy Spirit will take care of it. If he called you into something, he'll guide you through it. You know, in the, the early 80s and 90s, the saying, if it's his vision, he'll bring the provision. True. Um, and so when he gives you something, operate in it. Psalms 143.10 I just want to obey all that you've asked me to do. So teach me, Lord, for you are my God. Your gracious spirit is all that I need. So lead me on the good path that's pleasing to you, my one and only God. When I read that scripture, it sounds simple and easy. But when you have no idols before you, I don't think anybody's like that, but no idols before you, he is your only God. That means your, your teaching you receive from Holy Spirit will be pure. All of us have areas in our life that are not pure Okay, the Bible says there's nobody perfect, no, not one. So the most perfect person in the world that you think is perfect, they're not perfect, but they're close probably. But the thing is, the more you lean into the Holy Spirit, your ways will be made pure. The, the more pure that you are, like, like when you're drinking water, you wouldn't want to drink out of a nasty creek unless you're a country boy and you're really thirsty like I used to be when I was a kid. But you want to drink of something pure. People are looking for pure-hearted people to pour into them. What did Paul say? Pour me out as a what? A drink offering. God is looking for some drink offerings right now. Some people to pour out that are pure, that they don't need anything from other people. They're not manipulative. If someone, if you go to somebody and you can tell they're trying to manipulate you, you know their ministry is not pure. That's why you need to overflow because you need to be pure so God can pour you out as a pure vessel. Romans 8, hey, I'm just talking to you today. I hope that's okay. Usually I just, I like preaching and, and stuff, but man, I just, I just became a, just, just getting in the scriptures about the Holy Spirit. And, and with the Holy Spirit, if you can learn to devote just some time with him every day, just you and him, it would change everything in your world. Romans eight fourteen, for as many are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's pretty simple. For the people that are led by the Spirit of God, they will be the sons of God. If we can learn to be led by the Holy Spirit, watered by the Holy Spirit, your fruit will look like the Holy Spirit's fruit. You know the fruit of the Spirit? First Galatians 5, 22. I like 23 as well. Most people leave that off. But I just love joy and peace. Does it come out of your life? Like, and, and when, when I get fired up, and that's pretty easy, when I get fired up about something, I'll be like, oh, whoa, we got to find some fruit of the Spirit in here because love, joy, and peace are not my top three things going through my mind right now. So I got to pull back. And if someone ever triggers you and frustrates you, don't look at them or what they do. Why don't you pull back for a minute and say, God, what's in me? And little by little, I'm growing. I'm slow learner on a lot of things, but I'm, I'm learning, I'm growing. And so... The, one of the greatest compliments my wife ever gave me is it's about a year ago we were in public and something happened and she goes, ooh, I'm proud of you. I said, really, what I do? And she said, you didn't go off. You, that used to set you off. I'm like, I was old, Joe. I was 2019, JoJo. This is new 2021. And uh, I didn't tell her what was going through my mind, but I was like, I, that's a big win. I don't know why y'all laughing because every one of y'all got triggers too. you like, you're like a gun. You got a trigger or you'll go off in a second on something. But what the thing is, when we, we let the Holy Spirit, he, he will like, shh, just stop. Just, just don't even give in to that. And what God did for me one day is he said, when something happens against you or against somebody that you love, it's usually not. And when you get mad at somebody, look at your, always self-examine yourself first. I'm like, that, 
I didn't understand that. But the more time I spent with the Lord, he taught me that when, when something makes me frustrated, listen, nobody should ever be able to frustrate you or make you mad. There's something inside of you that frustrates you. So when Jesus was on the cross and they were naturally killing him, and then, you know, this, the whole crucifixion, the carrying the cross, nailing him to the cross, the crown of thorns on his head and stabbing him in his side. He still said, Father, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. That is like the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate being filled with the spirit of grace upon your life. Like crazy. And so that's what we have to, to learn and, and glean from. Uh, Romans eight sixteen. The spirit... The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And when you start operating in the Spirit, let the Spirit be the loudest voice in your life, you will start to pick up the characteristics of Christ Himself. When you start doing that, you will start to have a voice in so many people. Business people will get contracts. They don't know why they're getting contracts. They don't know why they're getting new clients. They'll have no idea why they're getting promotions at work that they don't even deserve or they're not qualified for. Just You'll get promotions and you'll be like, I'm not qualified. Oh, we don't care. We just want to bring you up to the top because it's you. Listen, your character and your integrity is more powerful than any gift that you have because the world needs people full of character and people of integrity. Ephesians, back up. The children of God can can expect to be led by the Spirit of God. Now, it's not always in our timing, you know, because in my opinion, God moves a lot slower than he needs to, but he's God, so I'm going to let him, you know, be God. But I'm just like, Lord, I, I just wish you would hurry up on some things. But after, after the situation takes way too long, there was always something that I gleaned from that, that I learned. Like, we're building our house. I remember it rained for two months. We were on a two-month Stand still because of the rain. Oh, I got so frustrated. My wife was getting frustrated. And then one week, we got ready to buy the lumber. And my builder was like, hey, we need to buy the lumber. And Holy Spirit said, wait, one more week. I'm like, one more week. We've been on a two-month delay, Holy Spirit. You, you know, we, we need my house rolling. And we, and we waited. And then my builder was like, yeah, you know, these studs are about, you know, $17, $15. The next week, they dropped to 12 and the Holy Spirit said, wait another week. And I said, I will wait another week. Next week, they dropped to $5. We bought, and then they went back up to 10 Yeah, saved a lot of money on that. Listen to the Holy Spirit. There's been times I wanted to call one of my friends up and minister to him, and the Lord said, don't minister to him. Then the next week, something happened in their life that they, they had, it took a hard blow. When I called them, it was just the right time. And he said, man, I've got to have God now. And I was thinking, if I would have called him the week I wanted to, Holy Spirit laid him on my heart, but he didn't tell me to call him then. And listen, here's the thing. When you follow the Holy Spirit, it's not like, oh, Holy Spirit, speak about this. Holy Spirit, speak about this. Holy Spirit, speak. It's not like that. You're just going to learn to flow with the Holy Spirit. And he'll just speak to you. When he wants to tell you something, he'll speak to you about it. Um, Ephesians 4.30, it says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom was sealed for the day of redemption. Uh, another translation says, the Holy Spirit of God has sealed you in Jesus Christ until you experience your full salvation. So never grieve the Spirit of God. Here's the best part. You ready? This is in the Passion Translation. It says, never grieve the Spirit of God or take for granted His holy influence in your life. In your life, never take for granted the influence he should have. And so when you, have an, when you live your life like that, it will shift everything when you start to allow Holy Spirit to have complete influence in your life. How do you make your decisions? By the Spirit of God. Now, here's the thing. When you start saying that and things don't work out right, <laughs> make sure it's, it's the Lord when you say that, okay? Because a lot of people, oh, the Spirit of the Lord told me to do that. And the next week they're doing something different. I'm like, did God change his mind? So John 14, 16, and I will pray to the Father and he will give you another comforter. You got the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with you. He is going to stay with you. And so by having the Holy Spirit, it just shifts everything in your life. Remember 
when I was reading the, uh, the scriptures earlier and it said that the Holy Spirit will come in and yes, Holy Spirit lives within us, but all throughout the Acts, it talks about how the Holy Spirit will surround us. When you get ready to, I mean, go to work, when you get ready to go to, I don't know why, but I just keep saying big decisions in your life. This is how I pray. Holy Spirit, would you go before me? Every week before I get to church, I'm like, Holy Spirit, would you go before us and put just an encampment of angels around this building, the anointing flowing out, that when we walk in, we feel the Spirit of the Lord in a strong way. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Pray that over every big decision that you make in your life. Pray that over everything. Holy Spirit, would you go before me? So when I step into something, I'm stepping into, yes, filled with the whole, I call it double anointing. Holy Spirit within you, Holy Spirit around you, you walk in. You will start to see things flow so much easier. I remember different things in my life. I used to say, Holy Spirit, I'm doing this. Would you bless me? Oh, he would bless me in something. But then I would say, okay, I'm done with me being me. I want to just surrender my life to what you have for me. Do you know the cares and the struggles in my mind are gone? Because it's he, me doing what he's called me to do. It's not me ever failing. It's my kingdom agenda manifesting. Do you understand the correlation of the two? And so when I was um, really, really young, I'm still real young, but when I was under 40, I would always have these great ideas and ask God to go with me. And they were blessed to a degree. Now my blessings are at a different level because I've surrendered my will. This is how I pray. Holy Spirit, put your desires in my heart so when I function in my day-to-day -day life, they just flow out of my heart and I'm doing exactly what you've called me to do. That I don't have to question, is this the will of the Lord for my life? No, God. I want every just thought to be of you as I function in my life. And where does that come from? Guys, it doesn't come from a Sunday morning service. It comes from a Monday morning service, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Ooh, Saturdays is real anointed. And when you do that, sometimes I'll just say, Holy Spirit, I'm going to save, I'm going to save my lunchtime today just for you. And so I just, I just pray for an hour on my lunch break. Yeah, I get a little hungry, but you know what? My hunger for him, it grows more each day. I am so hungry for the spirit of God. The more, you know, the Bible says that, that we should pick up our cross daily and follow after him, which means our flesh dies, our spirit grows. When our spirit grows, we operate in our kingdom design more. Therefore, we function better. We're more successful in everything that we do, and we worry less. Did y'all get all that? And so now people say, man, you know a lot. I say, I don't know. I don't know hardly anything. I'm just following the Lord. People say, oh, you sound so just churchy. I'm like, no, <laughs> that's biblical. I'm just following the Lord, following the cloud by day. And just following the cloud is whatever God wants me to do. And then here's the thing. When I spend time with the Holy Spirit, I, I shift that over into prayer. And when God gives me something, you catch this. When I leave the place of prayer, I work in the natural, but led by spirit. Does that make sense? I get my ideas in prayer and by the spirit. But when I work in the natural, I'm asking God for wisdom in the natural realm. Because everything that's been done in the natural, somebody's written a book, did a podcast or a video. And then I apply that to what God birthed. And then it's always successful in what you do. Does that make sense to you? Okay. I don't know, that was just something that the Lord just really wanted me to share because some people are so naturally minded, they're no spiritually good. And then there's some people who are so spiritual, they, ha they have no value to the natural realm. They can't help anybody because they're, they're always laying on a cloud. Um, in prayer, they're just, you need to learn how to operate and go, be a spirit person impacting the world in a great way, being led of this full overflowing in prayer and take that overflow to the world that's how you change society and you do it one person at a time and the way our society is going to be changed it's not going to be the way a lot of people think it's going to be by individuals overflowing taking their private holy spirit prayer meeting and they take it into the natural world and let that overflow happen and you're going to find favor and blessing on your life 
like you could never. And I just felt this so strong in prayer. Some of you are going to have things happen for you. Like, just get ready for it. It's going to happen for you. Don't ever think your big promotion, your big break is, is, is really, it is for you. But when God opens a door for you, everybody behind you is about to get blessed. So I want you to keep that on the forefront of your mind. That's it for the day. And this is what I, over the next week or two, would you just do a, a word study on the Holy Spirit? Just, I don't, you can use a concordance index, the back of your Bible, do some cross references, read a book on the Holy Spirit, like Derek Prince, Kenneth Hagin, they got some good books about the Holy Spirit. Study the Holy Spirit and you will understand how much he loves you and how much he wants your time. He wants your time more than any person in this world. The Holy Spirit wants your time more than a little kid. The Holy Spirit wants your one-on-one -on -one time. And, and there is never, ever, ever a single moment wasted in prayer. All right? So, you know, we have these professional altar calls here. We're going to pray. They're going to play. Some folks are going to come up here, be on the prayer team. If you want prayer, come get prayer. If you don't, before you leave... Just spend a few minutes right here for the techie people. Get your notepad out on your phone for my good pen and paper people like myself because batteries never die on that. Get something from the Lord. He's going to speak to you about something. He just, he's going to speak to you about something today. And then we're going to pray for people and we believe that God is about to move in a powerful, powerful way. Holy Spirit, you, you just had us to, to speak on you today. And Lord, we love you. We honor you with everything that we have. I declare that every person in here will have a hunger in their spirit like never before. Like never, ever before. Just to seek you on a daily basis. Just to, to know you. Just to know you for, for just the pure relationship of knowing you. Lord, as, as things are going on in our world, that you would reveal revelation knowledge. Give us comfort and peace during these times and also give us wisdom on what to move forward in, Lord. There is a lost, hurt, dying world, but Lord, you are raising up people right now. You're raising up warriors to make an impact for the kingdom of God. Lord, we love you and we bless you so much, Lord, today. And I pray that today everybody receives from you that when we leave today from this, this church, that we go out, Lord, and we're ready to do whatever you've called us to, lay hands on the sick, lead people to you, have reconciliation with lost friends or family members, Lord. But things are about to shift in our life. Lord, we love you and we bless you. I thank you, Lord. So if you're in prayer, come up to the front. Somebody's going to pray for you. If not, to spend a few moments with the Lord. His Holy Spirit's going to start ministering.